Hello again, pre-calculus students. Today we're going to learn about conic sections and in particular parabolas. Now, in theory, prior to this class, you've learned about circles, so we're not going to uh, spend a lot of time on circles. Today we're going to go right into parabolas, and I'm sure there's going to be some material that you haven't seen before. So let's go. All righty. So let's see. A parabola is generated by a cone. That's why the, those, there are four shapes called conic sections. And those four conics are a circle, a parabola, an ellipse, and a hyperbola. So you can generate a cone from, a, I'm sorry, you can generate a parabola from a cone. There's also an algebraic way to generate a parabola. Let's take a look at what these four conics are. And there we go. All righty. Not sure if you can see that. Maybe I should share my screen. So here are the four conics. If you have two cones set together tip to tip and there's an axis running right down the center of them, so the cones aren't at an angle to each other. If you pass a plane through um, perpendicular to that axis that goes through the cones, you can see that it will generate a circle. <coughs> Excuse me. If you bring this plane, you bring, lower it down, down, down until it goes right through that point, that's called a degenerate circle, and it's only a point. The equation of this would be like uh, x plus minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals zero, and there is just a point that makes that true. If you take this cone and you tilt it a little bit and pass it through the, I'm sorry, I keep saying the wrong words. You take this plane, tilt it a little bit, pass it through the cone, you can now see how you generate an ellipse. And if you bring that plane higher, 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 higher until it goes through a point, you will also have a degenerate ellipse being a point. Now, if you keep tilting that uh, pl plane such that it's um, parallel, I'm sorry, to the uh, edge of the cone, you see how you're gonna generate a parabola. And if you move that cone through, you know, down, 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 you can see how eventually it's just gonna be the straight line. So that's gonna be what we call a degenerate parabola. And if you take that um, plane and you tilt it in such a way that, that it intersects both cones, like here you've tilted it, but it only intersects one cone. You tilt it so that it intersects both. Now you have a hyperbola. And if you move that plane in, 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 in till it hits the center, you can see it's just going to be two intersecting lines. That's your degenerate hyperbola. What we're going to focus on today is the parabola. <clears throat> so as I said, we can construct a uh, parabola from the cone by passing a plane through it, or we're going to come up with some algebraic formulas for parabolas. So here we go. The algebraic definition of a parabola is the locus of points, and a locus is a set. So it's the set of points that are the same distance from a line 
and a fixed point. That fixed point we call the focus and the line we call the directrix. Let's take a look at what's going on here. Here's the focus, here's the directrix. I'm just making the directrix horizontal right now because that makes life easy for us. So this distance from the focus to the directrix, you take half of it, that point has to be on the parabola. That's on the set of points that are the same distance from this point in this line. So you have this distance is equal to this distance. That's why I put one ticky mark on each. Um, over here, you can see this distance and this distance are the same. And notice if we're measuring distance from a line, it's got to be a perpendicular distance. So this distance and this distance are the same. So this point has to be on the parabola. This distance and this distance are the same. That point has to be on the parabola. You can see that all of these points in here are going to be the same distance from the focus to the directrix. Same over here. So that's what generates a parabola algebraically. Parabolas have some nifty qualities. There we go. <coughs> Everything that comes into a parabola parallel to this through the center, and that center line is called the axis of symmetry. The focus is always, always, always on the axis of symmetry. Anything that comes in to the parabola parallel to that line will bounce off. You see this angle is equal to this angle and will be reflected to the focus here to here. These two angles are the same. If you have um, a satellite receiver um, for television or if you've ever noticed um, satellite receivers, that's where you put the actual receiver because all the radio waves will come in and will re be reflected to this one point, and that's where you put the receiver itself. Working in reverse, that's how your car headlights work. The bulb goes right here at the focus, and the back of your car headlight is shaped somewhat like a parabola. So if the light from the bulb is going in all directions, it can go here and bounce out and go straight ahead. It can, the light from the bulb will go from here to here, bounce forward, go straight ahead. So those are just two practical applications of the use of a parabola. Now, most of us are used to ax squared plus b, or y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, to be the standard form of a parabola. The textbook I'm currently teaching from <clears throat> uses what other books call vertex form for the parabola. So here's your x minus h and y minus k. h and k represent your vertex. <coughs> and notice that. If we're, if we're doing y equals x squared, or y equals 5x squared, or y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, x is your independent variable, and y is your dependent variable all alone on one side of the equal sign. That isn't the case in this form. We have this value of 4p over here along with the y. And p is your focal length. That's the distance from the ver focus to the vertex. If we go back to the previous slide, P is the distance from the focus to the vertex, and therefore it's also the distance from the vertex to the directrix. And it turns out that four as a constant that is just part of the derivation of the parabola, that one you just have to accept. <coughs> so in this case, you can think of this as still a y equals x squared. So it's either going to open up or down. If it opens upward, 
then P will be positive, and you can see that the focus is above the vertex. So that means P is positive. If P is negative, the focus is below the uh, vertex. Similarly, if you have a parabola that opens left or right, that's like x equals y squared. So this becomes our formula. And if p is positive, it opens to the right. And your um, um, focus is to the right of the vertex. And if p is negative, the focus is to the left of the vertex. And the parabola opens to the left. So let's find the focus of everyone's favorite parabola, y equals x squared. Well, y equals x squared, we can rewrite that as 1y equals x squared. And we know that y equals x squared opens up down. This is going to be, well, actually it opens up. This is going to be our generic formula. Well, we know then that h k is our vertex. Our vertex is at zero, zero, because this is one times y minus zero equals x minus zero times, uh, squared. So we know that y equals x squared opens upward. <clears throat> and if 4p equals 1, p equals 1 fourth. So that means that the per, um, focus is above the vertex because p is positive. So the focus is 0, 1 fourth. Knowing that and knowing that the vertex is 0, 0, what's the equation of the directrix for this parabola? Well, it turns out, think, imagine your parabola opening upward. Let me get my parabola opening upward picture here. Here's zero, zero. Here's zero, one fourth. So the directrix must also be one fourth of a unit below that. So that must be y equals negative one fourth is going to be our directrix. Let's find the focus of this parabola. Written in a very ugly form, but you can see that it's an x equals y squared parabola. That means it's going to have this format for the equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor this and get it into this form. Hold on a moment. Well, I have to apologize for making this video when I feel so yucky. So let's get back to our screen share here. So, oops, there we go. So this is a 1x. And y minus k. So the first thing we did is I multiplied everything by 4 to get rid of these fractions. Then if I bring the 13 over to this side, I have y squared plus 6y 
I know that to complete the square, I take half of the six and square it. That gives me nine. So I have to add nine to both sides of the equal sign. I end up with four X minus four over here and Y plus three squared over here. Factor the four out, I get X minus one. So the vertex of this parabola is one, negative three, and 4P equals four, so P equals one. And I know that this is an X equals Y squared and it's gonna open to the right. So if this is the point one, negative three, because that's my vertex, then this must be the point two, negative three. Let's do another problem. Let's find the equation of the parabola that has this vertex and this focus. It's much easier for me to graph those points. So I go one, negative three, I go two, negative three. I can see the focus is to the right. So that tells me it's going to be an x equals y squared kind of parabola, not a y equals x squared kind. It opens to the right and this distance is one. So here's my equation for an x equals y squared parabola. I substitute p equals one in, and then um, one negative three for the vertex. And here's the equation of my parabola. Ready? Let's find the equation of the parabola with that vertex and that focus. Vertex of 2, negative 3, and focus of 4, negative 3. And that's also on page 697 of my, the current textbook I'm using. So if I graph it, here's my vertex, here's my focus. Again, it's going to be an x equals y squared type of a problem. I know now that P is two in this case, and I know that H is two and K is negative three. So I substitute those in. And just for giggles, the directrix then, if this is two units, the directrix has to be the vertical line in this case, two units to the left of the vertex. Well, if that's the point two negative three, the vertical line two units to the left of that is gonna be x equals zero, the y-axis. And the line of symmetry would be the line going right through the center of the parabola that will always, always, always go through the focus and the vertex, and that's y equals negative three. Now we come to every middle schooler's favorite part of a parabola. If we'd learned about parabolas in middle school, every seventh and eighth grade boy would laugh at the lattice rectum. And to be honest, I'm only showing you this because I think the term's funny, but here's the lattice rectum. The lattice rectum is the line segment that goes perpendicular to the axis of symmetry through the focus. How long is that lattice rectum? and it turns out to be 4p units long. And here's how we can get that. <clears throat> this distance here, I didn't draw the parabola in very well relative to the directrix, but from the focus to the parabola has to be the same distance from the parabola to the directrix. Well, how far is this? Well, I don't know, but I know how far this is because it has the same y coordinate as the, as the focus, that to go down to the vertex is, must be one p, and that's another p. So this entire distance here is two p. So from the focus over to here is two p, 
the focus over to here is 2p, so the lattice rectum is 4p units across. Again, I apologize for all the coughing and such. Huh. I guess we all have to live with it. So that's what we learned about parabolas today. We learned um, a new way of writing them, often called vertex form. And what's interesting is that that 4p is related to A. Let me find that slide again. You're, many of you are familiar with writing a parabola this way. Well, it turns out that if you were to get y minus k all alone on one side of the equal sign, you divide by 4p. And then you'd have something times x minus h squared. Well, you might be used to that and written, writing it in another form. That's a. So this a up here is 1 over 4p. Some of you are going to want to do practice problems, and you're going to want to stick with this because this is what you know. I'm going to tell you to add this to your um, mathematical capabilities. This is a very cool um, formula that tells us the focal length and the vertex of a parabola. It doesn't replace this equation. It's a new form. It adds to it. It gives you, it allows you to see something different than this one does. So that's all for this lesson. Um, I hope you have a great day.